is ABC 7 News, Chicago's number one news, with Alan Krzyzewski, Kathy Brock, weather with meteorologist Jerry Tad, and sports with Jim Rose. This is ABC 7 News at 6. He died doing what he wanted to do, living his dream. Two families in Indiana lose their sons in the war with Iraq. Greg Sanders and David Fribley were both killed in action. Good evening, everyone. It is, of course, the news that the family of every soldier hopes that they will never hear. Corporal David Fribley was from Warsaw, Indiana. That's near South Bend. Greg Sanders was from Hobart. He was married and had a one-year-old daughter. In fact, he left home just before her first birthday. ABC 7's Charles Thomas is live tonight in Hobart. Charles? Well, Alan, there has been a steady stream of friends and family, including some people who don't even know the Sanders, who have dropped by the family's home this afternoon to pay their respects. This family has made the ultimate sacrifice. Their 19-year-old son, Gregory, the first soldier from Northwest Indiana to be killed in the current conflict. He's got his little camis on. Leslie Sanders says she woke up yesterday with a bad feeling, a mother's intuition, she called it, that her 19-year-old son, Gregory, was in grave danger. And about that same time, the Abrams tank crew member was hit and killed by a sniper's bullet somewhere in the Iraqi desert. I never thought that he would be killed. It never, never occurred to me. And I remember him just hugging me and just telling him, be safe, be smart. And he reassured me that, you know, the troops look after each other. Gregory spent his entire life in Hobart, a patriotic town of 32,000, festooned in flags and yellow ribbons, honoring hundreds of residents on active duty during the Second Gulf War. Hobart High School, where Gregory Sanders was an honor student and ran track, counts as many as 75 graduates since 1999 who have gone directly into military service. You pray every day that everyone comes home safe. We have not only students who have relatives, but faculty members who have relatives who are serving in the armed forces. He was a, a good student in the classroom, and more importantly, he had great character and very respectful young man. Gregory was married to his high school sweetheart and left for Kuwait the day before his daughter's first birthday. Ironically, his most recent letter home arrived in the mail yesterday, a few hours before the soldiers came here with news of his death. What an honor it is to have so many people respect what he has given up. Leslie Sanders also this afternoon heard from the office of Indiana Senator Evan Bayh. Uh, he assured uh, Mrs. Sanders that her son will be given full honors by the United States Congress. Reporting live from Hobart, Charles Thomas, ABC 7 News. Kathy, back to you. Okay, Charles, thanks. And there is another Indiana community directly feeling the tragedy of war tonight. 26-year-old Lance Corporal David Fribley was one of nine Marines killed by Iraqi troops who opened fire after first pretending to surrender. Fribley grew up in Atwood in northern Indiana. His family says that before he left home, a soldier asked them not to go on television if something happened. They tonight are respecting that wish. We do know that David Fribley, though, was a track and football star in high school, and we talked today with one of his former coaches. He gave us the news there. Uh, I just frankly hung up the phone and I cried. I mean, he just, that, he's that kind of a kid. We asked our students to, to keep David and his family in their thoughts and prayers. And two Marines from the Chicago area died on Friday, Captain Ryan Beaupre of St. Anne and Corporal Brian Kennedy of North Suburban Glenview. And there are two Marines from an Illinois Reserve Unit in Peoria reportedly missing in action tonight. Corporal Evan James of La Harp, Illinois, and Sergeant Brad Courthouse of Davenport, Iowa. Both of them disappeared while they were underwater. They were apparently trying to cross a canal in southeastern Iraq yesterday. Two other Marines who were with them made it across safely. And area volunteers are doing their part to support our soldiers by assembling care packages. At the VFW Post 1197 in Batavia, these boxes are being sealed for shipment overseas. And at Navy Pier, they're tying yellow ribbons and organizing cards that were made by children. And students and parents from Mundelein School donated dozens of boxes of bottled water and snacks and batteries. I'm just so happy that they want to be part and, and to defend our country. I think it's just so honorable. And if this is the least I can do, 
I'm happy to do it. The USO came to collect those boxes today, and they will be shipped overseas and going to the troops. And if you'd like to donate time or money, you can log on to our website at abc7chicago.com, click on extra information, and we can then link you to the USO website. Here now is the latest information in the war with Iraq tonight. The Pentagon has just reported that U.S. troops killed between 150 and 500 Iraqi troops this during a ground battle in central Iraq. No American casualties were reported. Now, this comes after a day of sandstorms, as you can see here, whipping up across most of that country. But the United States says that Operation Iraqi Freedom is still on schedule. Secretary of State Donald Rumsfeld says the closer that the troops they'll get to Baghdad, the greater the chance that they may face chemical weapons there. And in the south, there's still fierce fighting for the control of the city of Basra. The United States says Iraqi landmines are making it hard to get humanitarian aid into that port city of Umm Qasar. Uh, tomorrow, President Bush and British Prime Minister Tony Blair are scheduled to hold a war council at Camp David. And a Chicago soldier is making history. Lieutenant Vernice Armour is the Marine's first female African-American combat pilot. ABC 7's Teresa Gutierrez in the newsroom tonight with more on her story. Teresa. Well, Kathy, this is an especially difficult time for parents coping with their sons or daughters deployed overseas. One Chicago father has his own way of dealing with the situation. It's like the other day she was in my arms uh, and then a toddler. Retired major in the U.S. Army Reserve's Gaston Armour is the father of 29-year-old Marine Lieutenant Vernice Gwendolyn Armour. Vernice, a former police officer, is the first black female combat Cobra pilot for the Marines. She says, Mama, don't worry. This is my job. This is what I've been trained to do. It's a tug of war when you're trying to handle your feelings and then support other family members. It gets uh, awesome. The war has armor on edge, particularly since a number of Marines have perished in battle. Today he received an email from Vernice. I just wanted everyone to know I was okay. Email me from time to time. Hearing from my family and friends really lifts my spirits. Bernice's parents divorced when she was a child, and she moved to Memphis, Tennessee to be raised by her mother and Marine stepfather. She's dedicated to what she's doing. Being that close with her dad and her stepdad, being uh, in uniform, so to speak, it rubs off on you. Armour says his daughter, a college graduate, became a police officer in Tennessee and Arizona before deciding to join the Marines. For the parents that are out uh, in the country, <clears throat> we want our children back, and we know that they have a job to do, so we want our children back, they have a job to do, that's the tug of war. Well, Mr. Armour believes that his faith helps him deal with his daughter at war. He says he is confident that God is watching over her and will bring her home safely. He added that the reason he talked to us on camera today is to help others who have loved ones at war. Reporting live in the newsroom, Teresa Gutierrez, ABC 7 News. Kathy, back to you. Okay, Teresa, thanks. And if there are important war developments tonight, ABC News will break into regular programming. And tonight at 10, we'll have the latest and a live report from ABC 7's Chuck Gowdy in Kuwait. A Muslim leader will soon be able to rejoin his family in Chicago suburbs. Today, a federal judge ruled that Sabri Shamira must be allowed back into the United States by Friday. Now, Shamira is, a, is the president of the United Muslim American Association that's based in Palos Hills. Immigration officials detained him back in January when he tried to return to Chicago after visiting his family in Jordan. Uh, the INS told him that they revoked his passport. In court today, though, the judge said that Shamira has the right to a deportation hearing since he's been living in the United States for 15 years. He has applied for resident alien status, and his children are U.S. citizens. Three juveniles are being charged with a hate crime in Villa Park. Police there say that the teens used a baseball bat to shatter a window at the Islamic Foundation. It happened on the 11th of March while the mosque was filled with Muslims praying inside. Oh. The three are from Villa Park and Lombard. Their names are not being released because the kids are too young. Up next here at 6, some former Chicago sports stars are taking a shot at politics, and that's making things a bit tougher for some aldermen. Also, a lot of people about to lose their jobs at Sears. We'll tell you why coming up. And later on, it could be worth a million bucks. It's going up for sale on the Internet. Some former sports stars may be on your ballot on next week's runoff election in Chicago, and that could cause problems for some incumbents. 
The Cummins are used to having their name recognized, but a couple of aldermen have to battle the star power of a former bull and a former Olympic athlete. Here's ABC 7's Andy Shaw. Kathy and Ellen, Chicago worships athletes when they're playing the games, but they often get rough, roughed up in the political arena where it's all hardball all the time, and a big name is also a big target, like former Olympic track star Willie White in the sixth ward on the south side, and even more so for ex-Bulls superstar Bob Butterbean Love in the 15th on the southwest side. Some of the love is missing as a campaign that began six months ago with a smile, a promise to help the kids in the 15th Ward, and highlights of a Chicago Bulls superstar, Bob Butterbean Love in action, ends with a candidate saying no to an interview request now that his opponent, Alderman Ted Thomas, is distributing copies of newspaper stories detailing Love's personal and financial problems, including three divorces, 11 children, a bank bankruptcy filing and a lawsuit for not repaying a loan from an old friend. If he can't take care of his business, how's he going to take care of the ward business? Simple as that? As simple as that. Thomas admits that he's been hampered by illness and inexperience in his first term, but now Bob Love is on the defensive. We all have personal problems sometime in our life. Bob has had his personal problems, but he's a great, sincere, honest man. He wants to help the people. Another former athlete, Olympic track superstar Willie White, is running the race of her life in the sixth ward on the south side, where the incumbent alderman, Fredrina Lyle, has most of the endorsements, including Congressman Bobby Rush, because of her experience. She's a hard-working uh, alderman, been one of the hardest-working aldermen in the city council. We don't have time to wait while she learns all of the answers to the questions, because our ward is in transition now. You don't need experience to care. I mean, that's just part of human nature, and that's just part of compassion and passion for people. Is that what's been missing out here? That is what's missing out here. Willie White is probably a slight favorite in the 6th Ward because 60% of the voters there opted for someone other than the incumbent, Fredrina Lyle, in the February primary. But out in the 15th, Ted Thomas, the incumbent, may have the edge over Bob Love, thanks in large part to those damaging stories about Love's personal and financial problems. But both of those races toss-ups today, the election a week from today. No one's doing any polling. It probably depends on how many people come out to vote. Yeah, it throws the balance off quite a bit, though. When you it see makes it. them interesting. The incumbents are known because of the incumbents, and the yeah. athletes are known because of their sports backgrounds. So flip a coin. <laughs> okay, Andy, thanks. Thanks, Andy. Well, Mayor Daley is likely smiling tonight. He's a proud grandfather. And today he spoke about the birth of his first grandchild. Little girl born on Sunday to Daly's oldest daughter, Nora Conroy, and her husband, Sean Conroy. They're actually seen here in their wedding picture. The baby's named Margaret Corbett Conroy after Nora's mother. And Daly told reporters how he felt when he first held his grandchild. Oh, wonderful. It's just, uh, I mean, it's just, uh, uh, you know, you think, about, uh, you think about your family, and you think about your parents and my grandparents and uh, what they went through and the same thing, uh, experience uh, this uh, wonderful family life and we've all experienced in different ways and I think that's what we cherish more than anything else is our families. The mayor says the baby's birth was especially meaningful after the death of his mother just a few weeks ago. We're going to turn out a dollar signs tonight. Sears is about to make cuts at his headquarters in suburban Hoffman Estates. More than 5,000 people currently work there. About three to 400 are going to be reportedly losing their jobs when the cuts come down, those are expected to happen next month. And on Wall Street, the Dow Jones average, a little change today, up 65, 1.3 billion shares changed hands. On the NASDAQ side, also gained today of 21. Volume there, just about the same as on the Dow. Not a bad day out there weather-wise, a little cooler today. And now there is some rain, though, in our forecast. Jerry Taft has our details up next. And later in sports, the White Sox getting a preview of the team that they're going to face on opening day. Pretty good this morning. There was sunshine out there, and yeah, it lasts nice for morning. about five minutes. Yeah, and now actually skies have uh, cleared somewhat around here now. And uh, so you're telling me I haven't been out in a while? Yeah, I know. Once you <laughs> get, get out inside the often, building, Kathy, you know? that's it. You're in. <laughs> actually, <laughs> Kathy, if you look outside, yeah. you know it's changed. <laughs> not many windows, you know. Uh, it's it's really not bad, especially when you compare the temperature to average for this time of year. Our average high is 50, and we made it up to 58. It's certainly not the 74 that we had yesterday, but not bad. 61 today in Peoria, 65 down in St. Louis.
clouds starting to move out. All the showers are well to the east of us along that cold front. And if you take a look at radar, you can see these showers continue to move to the east. So we have no rain in the forecast tonight, no rain in the forecast tomorrow. But tomorrow night, the next system will push in and we'll get some rain tomorrow night. We had a low this morning of 43. The high today, 58, 8 degrees above the normal high of 50. Currently 53. The wind northwest at 9 miles an hour. The humidity not too bad, 36%. It is about 8 degrees cooler at the lakefront. It's actually 10 degrees cooler than Midway, 45 at the lake, 55 Midway, 50 in Oswego, 55 in Mokina. Clouds starting to break a little bit, and again, you can see the showers to the south. High pressure pushing in. We'll have fair skies tonight, and then tomorrow we will see a few clouds moving in during the afternoon. High temperature tomorrow at 55, so another day tomorrow with temperatures above normal. It's not always going to be like that. You'll see on the five-day outlook. Tonight, partly cloudy, chilly, overnight low in the mid-30s. Winds out of the northwest tomorrow. We'll see increasing clouds during the afternoon. 55 as winds shift around to the south and west. In the 60s on Thursday with a morning shower. Also showers, maybe a thunderstorm on Friday with a high near 60. Falling temperatures on Saturday with a few snow showers on what Saturday. What is and that, that, Jerry? 42 on. on Sunday. Kind of a weekend anomaly there. <laughs> yeah, a weekend anomaly. I like that. <laughs> also, also known as crummy winter weekend, right? Yeah, that's, oh, that's true, man. too. 37. All right, Jerry. We'll mm -hmm. hope it gets better from here on out. Another group of local reservists shipping out this morning to help support the war effort. Members of the Illinois Army National Guard's Company C, 205th Medical Battalion, leaving from their base in suburban North Riverside today. Uh, these men and women are doctors, nurses, medics. Their first stop is Fort Riley, Kansas. They really do not know where they're going to end up eventually. Coming up here, one of the world's top golfers gets hurt boxing. And a Blackhawks goalie gone for the rest of the season. Jim Rose up next with all the sports. Gonna have the lights on out in the southwest. Tonight. Yeah, to get that game in, and uh, maybe it won't be as hot for these guys, and they can perform well. You know, a lot is expected from the Cubs and the Sox this yep. year from fans on the north and south side. Mm -hmm. On the spring training Cub uh, camp beat, I should say, the Cubs will play a rare Cactus League night game this evening when they visit the Padres in Peoria, Arizona. As for the Sox, they travel to a place called Surprise, Arizona, to face the Kansas City Royals. Sox have one of the best <laughs> records this spring with 15 wins, but today, as the children dance on the top of the dugout. They only mustered one run and a 2-1 loss to the Royals. After disappointing 2002, Kelly once says the 2003 version of the Sox ready to go. We got a great group of guys here this year, and I don't know what the difference is between this year and last year. If it's just, you know, breath of fresh air, having the offseason to kind of clear our heads, but everybody came in the spring training. Uh, a lot of guys came in with something to prove, obviously, and the work ethic and uh, 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 stuff like that. It just kind of gotten everybody sort of energized. On to the NHL now. You know, you have to feel sorry for goaltender Jocelyn Tebow, who is out indefinitely with concussion problems. He's experiencing nausea, headaches, and dizziness, so that means that Chicago area native Craig Anderson is the man between the pipes for the rest of the season. Hawks head coach Brian Sutter says concussions are an unfortunate reality of the game, and he is proceeding with caution with his all-star netminder. You know, you see it around the league. It seems like there's a couple guys in every team that have got uh, some sort of symptoms like that, and obviously it's a concern. So you're gonna you're gonna make sure their health is is at stake here, and and their best interest is at stake. Elsewhere in sport, maybe Ernie Els should stay away from a boxing equipment. He was working out on a speed bag, and he injured his hand. So that means that a celebrated duke out with Tiger Woods in this week's TPC is not going to happen. Ells withdrew because of that hand injury today. As for Tiger Woods, he has All recovered right. from last week's bout with food poisoning, uh, and he's ready. Tiger calls the TPC the best non-major event of the year, an event, he says, is always decided on the final three holes on Sunday afternoon. That would be, I guess, not vomit. Those are pretty intense holes, uh, given you know, what can happen, what has happened. Um, you know, when I I had that, that great, great battle with, with Hal down the stretch, I mean, anything could have happened. A Eagle 16 um, to draw within one, and anything could have happened in the last two holes. 
and um, you know that's that's the, the drama of it all and the, what Craig did last year um, anything can happen and I think that's no matter how big a lead you have it just seems like it's just it's not quite big enough going the last few holes Surprised he didn't brush those flies away while he was talking. He's got great concentration. Briefly, NFL has announced at its winter meeting in Phoenix that all-star refereeing crews will be scrapped. To many, uh, too many mistakes, I should say, last season, so they'll stick with crews that have worked together all season. And the International Skating Union is facing a new challenger. The World Skating Federation has been formed because of the corruption of the Salt Lake City Olympics, according to its organizers. And finally... This just in off the wires, Barry Bonds is good. You know that, right? Today he hit two more spring training homers, numbers eight and nine, which leads hitters in both leagues. Both of today's shots were classic Bonds bombs to right. With this guy, it just doesn't matter who's on the mound. Today's victim, Milwaukee Brewer Ruben Casado. The fans get a souvenir out there in right field. That's sport. Okay, Jim, thanks. thanks Jim. Unfortunately, we do have a sad update for you tonight on a story that we told you about earlier in our newscast. Corporal Evan James of La Harp, Illinois, was reported missing in action in Iraq. His body has now been found, now listed as killed in action. Thoughts are with his family tonight. Finally here, one of the world's rarest musical instruments in Chicago, but for a very short time. It is a Stradivarius violin, more than 300 years old. It's on display until tomorrow at the Chicago Symphony Center before it goes up for auction on the Internet in May. The Stradivarius will be sold online along with items belonging to a late maestro, Isaac Stern, but it's going to cost you. The Auction House of New York is estimating you're going to need a million dollars to pick up this piece of sweet music. Mm. Yeah, a million dollars worth of music lessons, too. Mm -hmm. Well, that's it for the ABC 7 News here at 6. For Jim Rose and Jerry Taft, I'm Alan Kraszewski. I'm Kathy Brock. Thanks for joining us. Have a good night, everybody. I'll beat anybody's price. I'll, I'll beat his, his price. price.